Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to discuss some of the things I'm hearing about the performance of Intel's XE GPUs, NVIDIA's Lovelace GPUs, as well as RDNA 3, because yeah, there is some very interesting things afoot from all of these companies. A few days ago, I put out a video discussing the performance targets of RDNA 3. One of my really good sources had told me that AMD were targeting a two and a half times increase for RDNA uh, 3, so, to put it in another way, the 7900 XT, assuming those naming schemes hold true, will be up to two and a half times faster than the 6900 XT. And this is thanks to a few reasons, higher clock frequencies and architectural improvements, which you can naturally assume, but also the fact that it would have up to 160 compute units thanks to, um, well, the chiplet-based design. And all of that does seem to make logical sense, at least to me. While my sources have had a very good track record in the past, for example, all of the RDNA 2 information that I leaked and a lot of stuff for RTX 20, this is not to say that all leaks are going to be accurate. Again, I'm fairly certain on a lot of the stuff I'm about to discuss, but I would still advise, as with any leak, that you take it with a pinch of salt until we get some official type of confirmation. And Interestingly too, one of my sources last year when they were giving me a ton of RDNA2 information, which of course turned to be uh, turned out to be really accurate, they were telling me that the ray tracing performance of RDNA3 as well as the geometry performance, along with actually just the architecture in general, was a pretty big leap over RDNA2. Uh, At the time, they basically told me that the leap we see from RDNA1 to 2 is going to be something similar for RDNA2 to 3. And yeah, ray tracing does definitely seem to be a lot faster. As we've seen from patents that uh, Underfox discovered on Twitter, there are large architectural changes, it seems, that AMD are going to be implemented in RDNA 3. And this would naturally increase ray tracing performance significantly. And for quite a while, I was hearing that a lot of the geometry work that uh, we saw for the PlayStation was going to find its way into RDNA 3 anyway, although it would be changed quite a bit from the PlayStation 5 implementation, but still some of the basic work would be there. So another source has actually come forward since I was discussing RDNA 3 and they told me a few very interesting things. And the first is that, yeah, to their understanding, the two and a half times performance increase does seem to be true. There is some ambiguity whether it's going to be a ray tracing performance or whether it's going to be rasterization performance, but they believe it's rasterization performance that they're referring to at the moment. Now, the ray tracing is the really interesting thing because it seems that AMD are going to be much closer to NVIDIA even when we take a Lovelace into the equation, and we'll discuss Lovelace in just a moment. There are some significant uh, performance increases that AMD will be bringing to the table here. It's going to be really impressive to my understanding. And I guess that also leads me to a question, and at the moment I don't have any answer to that. Will we see the MLA uh, chiplet that, of course, we saw uh, dis uh, that I discussed a few days ago in a patent? Will that be part and parcel of RDNA 3? Another source has told me that they don't think that RDNA 3 just has two chiplets, but it could be that the IO die or whatever else, is actually these additional chiplets, and therefore it's not MLA. AMD have said that the super resolution, of course, uh, technology is going to be applicable for the PS5, the Xbox series systems, as well as RX 6000. And basically, the um, from what we understand, it's going to be lower precision operations, which are running on the compute unit, so either 4 or 8-bit operations. So it will be very interesting to see whether this does actually come to the uh, high-end desktop GPUs, or whether this is going to be something more akin to APUs or the server market, for example, CDNA2 or CDNA3 or whatever. But yeah, that's nothing from a source, that's just me spitballing. And this brings me to NVIDIA. And we were hearing, of course, that Hopper was going to be delayed and we were going to see this other interim architecture released. And honestly, some people were kind of worried about this. Like, does that mean that NVIDIA got caught with its pants down? Would this, I guess, stopgap architecture, for a better way of describing it, would it not be that impressive? Would it basically be Ampere 2.0, higher clock frequencies, maybe a few architectural tweaks here and there, and on, of course, the 5NM process? Was it possible 
that NVIDIA made a misjudgment, a miscalculation. And then we started to learn more thanks to Copity 7 Kimi. They stated that it's going to have significantly more CUDA cores than what we see with uh, Ampere. It's going to have about 18.5K. And just in general, the architecture seems to be drastically improved. In fact, improvements to cache and other things too. So what I was told is that internally anyway, and we'll get to the Intel side of things because I think that's even more interesting than NVIDIA. So to my understanding, NVIDIA were not surprised about the performance targets with RDNA 3. In fact, it fell right in line with where they were expecting AMD to be targeting. So does this mean that Lovelace is going to be on par with RDNA 3? Well, in terms of ray tracing performance, it's very difficult to know. Um, AMD have been making a lot of headway in RDNA 3, as I've just discussed earlier, but NVIDIA were already so far ahead. So that I'm, well, I'm up in the air about, but the really interesting thing for me is that I've been hearing that NVIDIA are going to be doubling down, tripling down, like everything downing on uh, DLSS and some of the other proprietary technologies. This is obviously logical because it's giving them a major edge at the moment. DLSS is really good when it's implemented great. You know, when it's well implemented, it's amazing. DLSS 2, for example, on control looks really good. Uh, you can also argue the same thing for Death Stranding and a few other games. And yeah, I'm, eerie, I'm even hearing it's not going to just be for games in the future. They're going to start expanding it for other applications, but we'll wait and see to see whether that's true or not. But NVIDIA are definitely wanting to push its USP. The interesting thing, though, is that from what I was hearing, NVIDIA seemed to be actually more concerned with Intel. And I'm really unsure about this information, so I want you to take this with a huge grain of salt because there's a lot of conflicting info I'm hearing about Intel XE. So I'm just going to tell you what it is, and then we'll see how the chips fall, so to speak. But... When Raja Kodori was first joining uh, Intel, the actual design for, well, what will become of the Intel uh, XD architecture was very different. It had basically been designed to be like a video accelerator. That's not new information. We've known about this for a while. But Raja, I think anyway, made a really good decision along with the rest of Intel's management to expand this for graphic solutions. And this honestly makes sense when you think about it because Intel at the moment, they are a CPU only company, really. You know, they've got other solutions like SSDs, networking, but for the home user anyway, most people will just be like, okay, are you going to get the new Intel processor? No. Are you going to buy the new Intel processor? Yes. You might buy an Intel SSD, but they want to be able to offer everything. And that's why they have been really pushing this XPU uh, company kind of philosophy, including the One API. So we've already seen early reports of the performance of the DG1 based GPU. It's got 96 execution units. The poor little thing is not designed to play like Doom Eternal at high resolution. But even so, it does have some potential. Um, I do feel that Intel missed out a trick, making it basically being locked to um, their own boards, which is a totally separate topic. But TLDR, yeah, um, it's kind of doing what we expected. It's not a high performance device, but for what it does, it's, you know, it's okay. It's great if you have like an older uh, CPU or maybe you have a CPU which doesn't have a, uh, an iGPU or whatever else, you know, they're, they're interesting in their own right, but nothing nothing spectacular. However, the gaming-focused GPUs arguably is perhaps more interesting. So we were hearing about DG2 for quite some time now, and Raja has also shown off a GPU which seems to be for the data center. It's a two-tile design, which means 1,024 execution units total, with each tile having uh, 512 execution units. And this particular design seems to uh, be coming on fairly well. I mean, Raja said that it's ready for power run and all of this stuff. And from what we understand, there can be up to four tiles. Now, quite a while ago, I think it was like maybe a year and a half, year ago, something like that, I put out uh, some content because the performance targets of DG2 were allegedly an RTX 2070-ish. And the thing is with that, 
that would have been impressive if the card had launched back then. But obviously that was then, this is now, the market is in a very different position. And an RTX 2070-ish, unless it's really cheap, is not exactly amazing. Like, yeah. Um, and so this is where things become quite weird because I've been hearing that the original DG2 design had actually been scrapped. It would never come to market. A couple of people have told me that now, but then another one of my really good sources has told me that actually that might be true, but apparently Intel are changing the design quite considerably. And the new variant, which will come to market, is actually looking to be really good, and it's actually concerning NVIDIA. And this in particular is true for ray tracing performances. I've been hearing that the ray tracing performance of this GPU is really good. And what we do know is that XE does definitely support hardware-based ray tracing. I mean, one, it needs to in modern era, but furthermore, anyway, the Kronos group have basically outed this with their uh, Vulcan specification. It was confirmed that uh, XE does support hardware-based ray tracing. So to my mind anyway, it's going to be a really interesting next generation of GPUs because if it's true about Intel XE, well, I don't necessarily know if they're going to be outperforming AMD or uh, Intel's highest end SKUs, but they could be very competitive, particularly when it comes to ray tracing. As for AMD and NVIDIA, I suspect that it's still way too early at the moment. I mean, we're nowhere near retail samples, so we don't know things what, like, for example, what final clock frequencies would be. It's way too early to know that, and certainly about pricing. So I personally think that the next generation of graphics architectures is going to be insane. I think NVIDIA did a really good job with RTX 30, and I think AMD did a great job as well with RX 6000 series. But I do suspect that the next generation is going to perhaps be even more impressive relative to how their predecessors performed. Just in other words, I feel that they may be more impressive releases still. And I think this is a really great thing. I also have been really hearing at the moment that AMD have got way more resources for the Radeon Technologies Group. And I, you can really tell this, honestly, just in terms of the the speed of driver updates, you know, tweaks, the uh, messaging with the community and all of this stuff. And this is not to say that AMD are faultless or NVIDIA or any of these companies are faultless. They definitely have made a lot of faults, especially around, in my opinion anyway, the early shortages of the, the products. I don't think, you know, any of these companies handled it particularly well, but that's, you know, kind of by the by. And I do feel that it's now very evident that AMD are making a significant, uh, just a significant improvement in their graphics architectures. I think at the moment, if I was to rate RDNA 2, the only issues I have with it is ray tracing, which arguably it's not a killer at the moment, and DLSS, which we know is coming, like upsampling tech, and I think that's gonna be critical. It's still way too early to know what the quality was like, Back when I was first hearing about it, I'd been told that it was decent, but the quality wasn't quite as good as NVIDIA's DLSS, if DLSS from NVIDIA was really well implemented. And obviously, if you're comparing it to like DLSS 1, that wasn't particularly great. So again, um, I'm gonna kind of refrain on judgment for the uh, super resolution tech from AMD. I'm pretty hopeful about it. I'm hearing it's pretty good. Uh, and it's probably not going to release until the RX 6700 XT. Uh, that's kind of when I was first hearing about the target, so I do suspect that this is probably going to be, you know, roughly on par with that release date. And one last thing before I let you go, um, the performance targets of the RX 6700 XT I recently was discussing and said that it's faster than the RTX 3060, and this is actually not quite accurate. I've been receiving more information from one of my sources, and basically that seems to be the performance target of the 6700 Vanilla. The RX 6700 XT, though, is apparently faster than the RTX 3060 Ti. It's not as fast as the 3070, to my understanding, but it is faster than the 3060 Ti if you're in the right application. Of course, all of this does come down to games and all of that stuff, but of course, NVIDIA will still have advantages in like ray tracing. 
But I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. The normal stuff if you did, like, share, comment and subscribe. And of course, subscribing to the channel helps us out a ton. Uh, definitely ring the bell icon as well if you would. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.